Hello, everybody. My name is Ida May. Can everybody say hello, Ida May? Hi, back to you. I am with, I'm here with Paint with Faith, and Paint with Faith is a mobile motivational paint company, and we can come anywhere in the world through video. <laughs> And if we're in your region, and we can also come to you as well. So today we're going to be painting a duck and her little ducky in the water. And I don't know about you, but I love to paint things from nature, especially things that I see in my community. I'm inspired by trees animals, buildings, and even people that I see in my community. So to get started, I want you to help me get you motivated. So the first thing we're gonna do is, you're gonna repeat after me. Say, if I believe, I can achieve. One more time, if I believe, I can achieve. Great. So the only thing we want to achieve today is we want to finish a painting. We believe here at Paint with Faith that you can do all things. And today we're going to try that out um, by starting with a piece of art. Okay, so before we get started, let's look for our supply list. The first thing you're going to look for is your paint. We're going to be using the colors blue and orange and green and you'll need white and black. I think I have my black down here. So check your colors to make sure you have blue, orange, green, black, and white. If you don't have any of those colors, I know a lot of tips on how to mix colors and I can tell you how to do that when we get to those steps. Okay? Okay, let's get started. You should also have a towel or a paper towel, a water cup, and one brush. So we're going to take our brush and a little bit of water and we're going to wake up our canvas. You heard me right, we're going to wake it up. So. When you wake up in the morning, one of the first things you might want to do is get a glass of water. So we're going to give our canvas a little bit of water. So take your brush, dip it in water, and spread a little bit of water all over your canvas. And we're just going to wake it up a little bit. Okay. Now that we got a little water on our canvas, we're gonna get started. Here at Paint With Faith, we call this a canvas because we believe you can do it. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the orange with a little bit of white. You wanna put quite a bit of white into your orange mixture to make it very, very bright. When you mix white with any color, you're creating a tint of that color. A tint can help you create lots of beautiful contrast in your painting. The contrast is the difference between light and dark. Now that we have our tint of orange, let's paint on our canvas. I really want a very bright color, orange. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to my orange to make it very bright. It might even look pink when you paint it onto the canvas.
How does orange and white make pink? Well, who knows how to make the color orange? Did someone say yellow and red? That's right. If you mix yellow and red, you get the color orange. And how do you make pink? Did someone say red and white? That's right. So, because orange is inclu includes the primary color red, then you get the color pink when you mix red, yellow, and white. It's not truly a color pink. Sometimes people call this color salmon. And salmon is a fish that resembles this color when you cut it. Or, I think sometimes salmon can be gray, but the meat of the salmon, which a lot of people eat, is this color. You're going to bring that color down to the center of your canvas. When you get to the center, we're going to get ready to paint our water. Hmm, what color should we paint our water? What about the color when you mix blue and yellow? Hmm, it makes, did somebody say green? That's right, you get the color green. So I have some green, but if you don't have green, you can mix blue and yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my green to get a turquoise color. You can use the green right out of the tube or you can add a little tiny bit of blue to get turquoise. Just a little bit. I think that the green is a pure, really pretty color. So when I paint water, sometimes I don't make a straight line. I make kind of a wavy line. Hmm. So I mixed a little bit of white with my blue and green and a tiny bit of white to get a pale turquoise, closer to green though. I can show you my color again. It's green with a tiny drop of blue and some white. Or you can just brighten up your green just a little bit with some white paint. I like a little bit of blue so that it can tint it and give it a little bit of a turquoise color. Next, we're going to paint our water. I'm going to make my water a little bit wavy by making my brush go up and down. Because water is hardly ever still in nature. It's full of waves and motion from the wind and animals. Now that we have our first color, let's take it down. We can add
a little bit more blue to our green. Oh no! <laughs> there we go. This little this little lake is rocking and rocking and rocking. I'm going to take some turquoise now, my turquoise green, and add it. And then I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And then what color should I add next? Turquoise again. And then at the very, very bottom, a little bit more blue. While I'm painting my canvas, I'm always using very long strokes. And at the very bottom, blue once more. If you're running a little low on paint, you can always use a little tiny bit of water to just smooth out that paint and stretch it. You don't want to use too much water because then you might get paint on your clothes because it can become runny. But if you use just a little bit by dipping your brush into the water one time, and then you just spread it out. You can see it right here. Mm -mm. Okay. So we're going to wait on our friends to finish. And whoop. Give me a dot, mommy. Mm -hmm. And while we're waiting, if you want to add more blue to the bottom. You just want to use long strokes from left to right to smooth out the paint and get some nice different colors in there just like that. And so you have a green, a blue, green, a blue, a green, a blue, and maybe a little green at the bottom. And if yours has a different gradient that's quite all right it's nature we're gonna be painting something that you can see from the top of the water and from the bottom of the water so it's gonna be really cool illusion that is cool it's cool okay when you rinse out your brush you want to make sure you're taking your brush and you're pushing it into the bottom of your glass. And then after you finish pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, you want to take the brush and run it off the rim of the glass like that. And then you take the brush and you squeeze it. When you squeeze it, you want to pull it and pinch it just like that. And pinch it until you don't have any water any water remaining and now you have a clean brush now that our brush is clean let's move on to the next step the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint a little ducky in the water <laughs> so we're going to use our same turquoise green with green and a little bit of blue and some white Okay. 
and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our duck's head. So the duck's head is going to be on the right side, and we're going to make a question mark. just like that. The bottom of the question mark should be round, should be flat, just like that. And the top is going to go up and come around. I, I, I like it being too. So does everybody have a question mark? After we finish our question mark, now we're going to paint, now we're going to clean our brushes. Now we're going to mix the brown paint. To mix brown paint, we're going to mix white, a little bit of black, and white and black makes what color? Did somebody say gray? That's right. You're going to make the color gray. And you're going to add orange to the gray. Gray and orange will help you make a brown. When you make your brown, you'll be ready to paint your duck. So now we're going to make an arc under the duck. You can call it an arc or you can also call it an upside down frowning face or just an arc. <laughs> so this is my arc or half of a circle. When we color, when we fill in this shape, we're going to follow the shape of the wave. Follow the wave. All right, good job. And now your duck has a little body body. Does everybody's duck have a body? <coughs> okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make give our duck a little tail. And it's just going to be a little triangle going out, just like that. <coughs> hmm. I think this duck needs a baby duck. So let's make a little baby duck. So we're going to use brown for the baby duck. And we're going to do half a circle on top of the water. And leave a, a little bit of room from the edge. And we're going to make the baby duck a little bit smaller. And follow the wave. Follow the wave. I wish I knew some funny jokes about ducks, but I don't have any duck joke jokes. I remember when we were growing up, we used to play duck, duck, goose. Goose. Mommy, do you want one? Okay, 
our little baby duck is going to need a head. Instead of making a question mark, well, we can do a backwards question mark for the baby head. How do you do a backwards question mark? We can do a tiny little backwards question mark for the little baby head. <coughs> If you can't do a backwards question mark, you can just give the little baby duck a little round dot for the head. Okay, now we're ready to go underwater. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make the duck's body go under the water. So we're gonna take our brown and add a little bit of black to make it dark brown. And you can add a little bit of orange to ensure it's not too dark like a black and you're brightening brightening the brown back up. And when you're ready, go ahead and paint the bottom half of your duck. I'm adding a little bit of black and orange to keep my brown nice and brown. It's okay to leave this wavy line between the ducks in the water. So we're going to make the bottom part of the duck under there and do and leave a little bit of the wavy line there. Just like that. And you can make a little part right there for the tail. The same with the baby duck. You're going to create half a circle to show that the duck's in the water and a little bit of a wave just like that okie dokie now the duck's sitting in the water okay I think we're ready to paint our duck's faces. Hmm. Under this water, we can make a few rocks. So we're just gonna make the letter M and we're gonna paint in two rocks sitting at the bottom of our lake or a little piece of water. And let's do one more. You're going to get 10 minutes. I said go upstairs. And we're going to do one more rock over here to the bottom. So you can have one, two, three rocks. Maybe one of your rock has a little bitty rock on top of it. You can pick which rock you choose. I'm going to choose this rock over here to the right. Okie dokie. I'm going to rinse all the dark brown out of my brush now. Now I'm going to create a face for my duck. When rinsing out your brush, be sure to push at the bottom to the bottom of your water cup, pull the water off the rim, and squeeze and pinch to get all the remaining water out. Now, let's create a nice bill for our duck. So we're gonna dip the paintbrush into some orange paint and we're gonna flatten it by painting the front and the back of the brush, flipping it back and front as if it had a top and a bottom, like a pancake. And then that could give you a nice flat edge. And now we're going to paint in our duck's nose. 
So first you're going to fill in the inside of the question mark with the brush. And then you're going to paint out the long nose or beak and you're going to connect the top. And that is your beak for your duck. And we're going to do the same for the baby duck. The inside. And we're going to create a long nose. And go up. And that's the little beak for the duck. Just like that. Okay, so in this water, we're going to paint a couple Katie dids with the orange paint. So we're going to start up here in this corner and make a tall, long oval. One oval, long oval there, or you can just do like one tall, long, thick one. A Katie did, if I'm saying it correctly, is a type of plant that grows in water or swamps. And you don't have to line them up next to each other perfectly. One can be high and one can be kind of low. When you look in nature, there are a lot of shapes and color that complement each other. And so when you're outside, can you find all the things that are yellow outside or all the things that are red or all the things that are green? And you can see how squares complement each other or how colors complement each other. And you can begin to find patterns in nature. Okay, now that we have the tall Katie dids on the left and the right, we can use some black paint to create our lines. Excuse me. Let's use a little bit of Hmm, I want to use green paint. I'm sorry. We can use green paint to create our lines. And you can use green with a tiny bit of black. And if you put too much black in your green, add a little bit more green. When you create green and black, you create a hunter green. This is also called a shade. And you're going to create a line that connects all the way down to the water. You can go behind your duck or in front of your duck. I'm going to go in front of my duck. But you can go behind if you like. Behind means you just bring the stem all the way down and when you it come you intersect with your duck you just let the stem go right behind it just like that let's make a few tall pieces of grass so our grass can go all the way up to the top of our canvas do you know what a parenthesis is in writing you can you can make the tall grasses look like a parenthesis
and you can go in front of the grasses, in front of the katydids, or behind, or both. Remember, there are no mistakes in art. Okay. Now, let's add a few fishes in our water. To add fishes, we're going to make navy blue. We're going to take blue and a little tiny bit of black to make a navy blue. To create a fish, we're going to paint an oval. just like that. And the oval is going to have a V coming off the back of it. And that's going to make the little shape of a tiny little fish. Fish usually are in schools. And they swim in, in large groups of, or patterns. So you can make a small school of fish by adding little ovals that sit right next to each other. And I'm going to have my school of fish go in a diagonal pattern. How many little fishies can you draw? Let's see. I think I can draw a few more. Maybe I'll count them count them afterwards. We can count our fishes together. Okay. Let's count the fish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I made twelve fish in my little school of fish. You can make as many as you like. Okay. So, our next step is we're going to paint in a little face on our on our, our ducks. Oh no, I forgot. These ducks have little feet. So let's use some dark blue. And dark blue and black is called what? Well, blue and black is called navy blue. Navy blue or dark blue. So we're going to take some dark blue and we're going to make some little feet. So for the first duck, we're going to have 
a leg that comes down like this and a leg that comes down like that. So just two lines that come down and one's going to go forward and one is going to go down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give the duck, put a square on the end of it, or a triangle, I'm sorry, a triangle to give the duck a large webby foot. So let's do that again. We're going to do a triangle to give the duck a large webby foot in the water. And we're going to do the same for the baby duck. One leg coming down here and we're going to have Instead of doing the longer part, let's just do two small triangles because the baby duck doesn't have as many limbs as the mommy duck or the daddy duck, the parent duck. Okay. Now we can rinse our brush. The next thing we're going to do is use some black paint. When you're using your black paint, you just want to use a little bit. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to dip it in the black paint. And I'm going to flip it back and forth as if my brush was a pancake and put a br some paint on the front and paint on the back and the paint on the front and continue to flip it back and forth like this until I have a nice thin edge. You see the edge I have? So this is the fat side and this is the thin side. Taking the thin side of my brush, I'm going to do a little dot on right in the crevice above the the cheek of above the cheek of my bird if it had a cheek so right above the little cheek mark I'm going to make a little bitty dot for an eye okie dokie if you want your duck to smile Right in this part, in the little circle part, in the center, you can do a little smile. And we can make a little triangle under the bottom with our black paint. A little tiny triangle under the bottom with our black paint. Okay, that looks great. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our same pancake method. So we're painting 
and we're gonna make get that brush nice and thin and we're gonna add a few feathers to our duck so to make feathers you can just make almost little arcs or U shapes on the ducks back and I'm gonna make them to where they overlap each other so there's three three more and two at the top so maybe you can have one two one two three and one two three four let's try it again on the baby's back one two at the top three in the middle and if you can fit four at the bottom <laughs> how many feathers can you add to your duck The top of the Katie did can take one long black line. Just like that. You're doing a great job. So the last thing we'll do is let's add a little bit of orange to our beak one more time. Let's rinse out our brush really, really well. And be sure to drag the tip of the brush over the rim of the glass. And then we'll squeeze. Let's take a little bit of orange paint and paint in that bottom triangle. You can leave the black lines and just paint in that orange triangle. to ensure that your duck has a complete orange beak. Sometimes black paint can be difficult to cover, but we're gonna do our best. So we painted it black here, but we're gonna just cover it up to ensure we have a complete orange bill and we can keep some of the black lines okay so while our friends finish up I want you to help me sing our company song paint with faith has amazing songs that helps us stay motivated and so that you can remember our experience today. So just repeat after me. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. Okay. Let's sing it again. This time, we're going to put a little jazz to it. Okay, here we go. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. 
Okay, thank you all for painting with faith today. Can you hold up your paintings and see how you did? <gasps> wow! Thank you for painting with me today, and I will see you next time. Ida Mae is signing out.